And there it is. Wow. So I'm so used to having like that music and getting excited. And uh, I guess we're getting hit with some sort of copyright violation from Facebook. So um, even though it's licensed music, like royalty free music, anyway, if we get banned now for TikTok, 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 yeah, I'm tapping out completely. Too. I can't keep up with copyright infringement. Good morning, guys. How are you all? Good morning. Hey. Good morning. And uh, let's see. Let's see who's going to be joining us today. I know Nicole is not going to be able to make it. She's got some things going on at home and turn, turn the Monday over to the three of us again. I don't know if this is going to if this is going to be a good thing or not. Um, but I'm in the middle of shutting things down and Internet's going crazy and my car is falling apart and it's Monday and I want to crawl back into bed and drown myself in coffee. How are you guys doing? Well, let's just set let's just set expectations here. OK, we had to ad lib <laughs> last Monday and we did relatively well. Or at least you guys did relatively well because I wasn't even there. But uh, don't expect it two weeks in a row. <laughs> I like I like how you set these expectations. Like, hey, we're a one trick pony. We can do it one time. Can't necessarily get after it twice. And I realized that I was filming on this camera yesterday using a flat color profile log, if you shoot video, and I have not taken it off. So I have this very zombie cast to me at the moment, very flat, very. So if you can picture saturation in your mind and correct skin tones, apply your own LUT to whatever this is. That's not feeling yeah. well today, y'all. So, <laughs> so, so I, that was that's interesting, Matt, because coincidentally, I, I told you I broke my camera and my lens a while back i dropped it on the ground uh, i had to get it no repaired. oh no yeah no i didn't okay well i mentioned it sometime but anyways i i was doing a shoot and i placed it on a little stool and i said i should not put it here it's the wrong place but i said well it's two seconds so i put it down i'm shooting tethered i come back to pick it up and my foot gets stuck in the cord it pulls it it and it's my uh, oh. canon 5d mark four mm -hmm. with a 70 to 200 mil you can imagine how heavy it is right and how long and it just smashed on the floor from two feet high. It's not that high, oh, but basically both of them were shot. So I got it repaired. But the moral of the story is, uh, other than the $1,700 later, but the moral of the story is uh, I got the 5D4 upgraded with the uh, C-Log um, firmware, yep. which yep. now allows me to shoot in C-Log, which I've never done. I still haven't tried it. Yep. And... Um, I'm kind of scared to do so if I'm going to look like that, if things are going to look like that, Matt. But <laughs> no, no, actually, I kind of. Not that you're not a great guy, Matt, but. Uh... <laughs> if, if your boudoir clients come out looking like this. Exactly, then... exactly. I want flat and airy, but anyways. <laughs> so, yeah. so yeah, interesting that you mentioned that because that's something recent and, uh, and I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to fool around with it. I kind of know what to do, but uh, haven't really done it yet. Yeah, you know, um, and we're just going to say good morning to Hello, Crystal. Crystal. Hey, and Cicela. Hey, guys, how are you? Um, so, yeah, just to kind of keep the conversation going a little bit about video before we get into facial expression. Um, you know, I had the same thing happen uh, about a year or two ago. Basam put my laptop and my computer on a very unstable surface. And I'm like, just need to turn around and talk to the client for a second. And I turned around. This is before frame one was shot on the day and I knocked the laptop and the camera off. Everything shattered, everything broke. At which point, catch a little vomit in your throat. And you're like, all right, don't let the client see you sweat. And thankfully I had like an extra body and walk, yeah. work through it. But when she left, it was like immediately with the insurance, they covered everything. But man, oh man, there's no worse feeling than that slow motion when you're watching your camera fall and it lasts for days when you watch that hit. Yeah. Oh yeah. Terrible. Oh, oh. I've got a, uh, a spider belt now for, I guess, God, probably like seven years. Yeah. Something like that. And on one occasion, I was Oof. in motion with a 70 to 200 on the end of it and didn't catch the track and like, 
when I put it in there, I try and be pretty forceful to make sure like, yeah, you're in there. You wham it in there. I just threw it straight on the ground. <laughs> it was just like, <laughs> yep. I was and like, the, the same vein, spider holsters. I've got one of the little ones, little belt clip, not the big holster, but the little one for cameras like the Fuji, like mine. It's got this little screw stud in the bottom of it and it works great. I have nothing, no problem with the product itself. But over time, that screw turns out, turns out, turns out, turns out. So the last time you put it on your belt, it just rockets to the floor. So that's happened once or twice too. Got to fix that little product defect. All right, guys. It's, it's, uh, this is part of the, uh, this will happen to you at least once. So don't, you know, like losing an SD card or whatever. This is yeah. the, the purpose of redundancy, right? So exactly. this is why you have a backup body. This is why you, you know, you have insurance and the, it's going well, to my happen. Insurance, uh, my insurance covered it, but the deductible was $1,000. So I wasn't sure if it was worth it for. That's about six, what mine was too, I think. Six or so $700. You're like, sure, here's a grand. Now replace it. <laughs> yeah. Now give me five grand. This is how this works. Um, <laughs> all right, guys. So let's talk a little bit about. Facial expression. Now, as we we kind of go through visual literacy, I will not pretend that I'm going to do the same job as Nicole. Um, but we've been having these good conversations as we look at images. And if you've got um, if you've got images, uh, Kat and Basam, that you want to send me in the meantime while we're talking, I know we've got a couple that I'll, I'll wind up sharing. But um, visual literacy, when we're looking at all of the aspects, right? We've talked about color and theme and um, got, uh, comp uh, we talked about composition and we're talking about, um, you know, all of these aspects that Nicole has been going through week after week after week. We're getting more into a little bit of the minutia and we're talking about facial expression, what that can do to alter an image or how do we read the image with facial expression, right? We're talking about some things the other day with colors and textures and fabrics and we start hinting around at what the different elements of a face, where are they looking? How do they feel? Is it you know, tied into the main character? Are they the main character? Are they not? What are the things? Happy, sad, joyous, thoughtful, right? There's a million expressions out there. And Basama, I wanted to talk to you first because in the Facebook group, you posted that video of all your expressions. You were talking about your your self-portrait adventure a while back and that you, um, you know, you put all of those expressions into one video to see. You want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I mean, uh, if, if we go back to the background here, uh, a while back when when we were doing the uh, some of the challenges, uh, um, I think it was about emotions or something like that. Uh, actually, it was self portraits, but I linked it to emotions, and I wanted to experiment with what 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 do people see in me? How do they see me when I go through different emotional uh, states or, or display different emotions? And I came up with kind of a nine or twelve pictures that kind of speak to that, and I showed showed them here at, at one of our lives. Uh, so when we talked about facial expressions, I went back to that shoot and I kind of forgot that I had over 300, 300, maybe 320 pictures that I took for each emotion. I took like 10, 15, 20 shots and I, and I went through them and I thought, Hey, it would be great to kind of put them together in a, in a kind of a, uh, uh, a quick, you know, 0.2 second through each of the pictures did that uh, over the weekend. Um, we have the result. Uh, we'd love to show it here. It was no nothing behind it other than, you know, putting it all together. It's kind of a good kickoff for our discussion today. And and uh, I don't know if you want to show that. Uh, but before you show that, just just a subject that maybe on on a, on the subject of facial expressions that we can explore today. One thing that I find maybe unique about facial expressions is that they're universal across the whole species, right? And I don't know. Maybe we can debate that. Like you can look at anybody and you can tell whether they're sad, they're happy, they're this, they're that. There's kind of a set of emotions that every human will recognize in every other human. But is that true? You know, are there enough nuances that we can interpret facial expressions in 10, 15, 20, 30, 100 different ways? Or are they truly universal? It's just a thought that came in my mind now in terms of, you know, if you compare it to other visual literacy elements, which can be interpreted in millions of ways, 
well, maybe facial expressions are unique that way. And I wonder what you think. I don't know. Oh, can't hear you. I'm on mute. I, I got it. Um, so I know that, you know, we talked about this a little bit the other day where we're hardwired to see faces like that, right? We're always looking for threats. That caveman part of our brain is always kind of looking at hands and looking at faces and trying to interpret um, what it is we see in seconds. So how do we translate that to our photography? How do we use that to our advantage? Photography or art or whatever, whatever your discipline is. Um, so as we're thinking about that, Bassam, yeah, I think there's there's that universal understanding of what's anger versus joy, right? What's pleasing versus what's potentially threatening. And I think we're all hardwired with that. It's the nuance where and our own interpretation of that nuance, which is where things get sticky, right? right. Where I might see something thoughtful, Kat might see something angry, you might see something as bored, right? So it might be that same kind of minutia in the expression. So when we're doing what we do, whether that's photography or painting or drawing, illustrating, do you guys work on a certain expression are you giving prompts? Are you um, shooting and hoping for an expression, giving general guidance? Do you know it when you have it? Where? How do you guys incorporate facial expression into how you're shooting? Kat, I'll let you go first. Mute, mute. Sorry, I was sending you stuff and I was like trying to go through my library really fast. Too many things um, at once. Yeah, multitasking Monday. Lola, I'm gonna need you to just chill out, okay? Yes, I love you. Um, so it's it's interesting. Like I might give prompts if I'm looking for something specific. Uh, you know, depending on the type of session it is. Um, but and this is, you know, that the images that I sent you are of me, but they were not shot by me. And different photographers have different ways of creating that, that connection, right? Through expression. And like two of those images are by Aaron J. Young. And up until being photographed by him, I was very like, you know, asking the client for like, okay, well, if it's boudoir, right? Like think about something that makes you feel really terrific about yourself. Like, have there ever been a moment where you felt like a million dollars, right? I'm not asking them to think of sexy things like that's immediately going to make somebody uncomfortable. Um, but Aaron does not give direction. And he allows you to kind of sit in your own like, whatever whatever yeah and then as you become more comfortable or uncomfortable in the moment like that's where he starts you know creating that portraiture he focuses primarily on like you know the the light and his connection with you and then lets that discomfort sort of direct the show um which was a really fascinating process um uh, because it made me as a subject sort of really start to think like, okay, what do I want out of this? Like I can get really uncomfortable and so, it's going to show or I can make the best of whatever it is that that I'm looking for. Uh, so so it, just, to, just to clarify, sorry, I know I'm interrupting, but you said he, he doesn't give instructions and then you said and he does it through his connection with you. So is he talking to you anyways, but without giving instructions? So no, how, how is he connecting with you? with you? How is he connecting good. with you without words? He stays present with you. Just present. He moves around the room. He looks at you straight in the eye. Like, it's it's a really interesting process. Wow. It's fascinating. Could be intimidating. Um, He's such a non-threatening person. Yeah. Like, yeah. his energy is very, like, loving and you know, warm, that it's not like, 
who is this dude yeah right it's not yeah. like that it's just he's very present and you can see that he loves you yeah and no, i was i was referring to the silence being intimidating in a way not yeah i mean i understand that personality makes a huge difference but just the silence and the awkwardness of not knowing what to yeah do. well and it's interesting i was there with um sarai taylor roman and landstrom and Linka jones and each of us sort of had our own like uncomfortable moment like tell me what to do like i don't know what i look like right now um and he wouldn't budge and it was awesome it was really really terrific um but there are other photographers like peter hurley for example right who will give physical direction on expression right like the squinch is a perfect example of that you know he talks about it how did he put it um he was recently on like Good Morning America or something on the, the headshot piece. And he was just talking about the squinch about being, you know, the lower eyelid and bringing it closer to the pupil, right? To garner that that interest. So it's like the, I don't know, not the antithesis of a smize, but like the hand in hand with maybe. Because uh, the smize is really more about like, you know, bringing the the space of your eyelids together, but also lifting this area here um, for trying. So. Yeah. 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 I don't know if I answered your question. I just kind of ran off at the mouth for a minute. <laughs> no, it's it's really interesting, right? And that, that brings into question direction, right? Or are you really directing an expression? Or are you just helping someone get to it? I think I find that really, really interesting about Aaron, because his work is so powerful, right? You would think that there's some prompting or some direction to get into that space. Um, but you know, when you're left to your own devices, I guess we just kind of wind up in these really interesting places. And he's good. He's a wonderful documentarian of that space for people right of really the, well, the depth um and i think he uses it really really well well and i think the thing about you know aaron specifically is i would say one of the one of the most powerful things about his work is the expressions he's able to draw from people right right and the fact that he's drawing them without that direction like he'll direct and pose a little bit like okay you know bring your head you know right. down a little bit or wrap up around your knee or you know whatever um but at the end of the day, like that expression is what he's getting from people. But when you think about the the Hawthorne's theory or the observer effect, right? Like when the observer becomes part of the ob observation, like what you're seeing is him being mirrored back through his subjects. Mm -hmm. uh, and that I think is just so incredible given his process. Yeah. So Basam, how about you? Do you do you do prompts or a lot of direction do you try to guide them to like you know just the corner of your mouth up just a little bit more like how how minute do you get with your uh with your expressions with your clients you, you know it's a combination of many things uh it really is depends on the, on the situation right i can get pretty what's the word physical and technical in the sense that you know try to do this try to do that try to open your mouth with uh without showing me teeth but with only like a millimeter like, i'll actually go through some of the details of what i'd like them to do but usually we do it as we're practicing or as an instruction up front before the... So I'll say things like, I'm often going to tell you to breathe through your mouth. This is what I mean by doing that. So it's not like I'm doing it as we're taking the picture. It's kind of an instruction up front of when I say that, this is what I'd like you to do, right? That way it takes away that, that mechanical posing situation as we're doing the photo shoot, as opposed to that connection with the client and that feeling the client gets that I'm actually helping them prepare for it, putting them in the right mindset, giving them instructions without pressure. We kind of sit on a couch, kind of our legs crossed and just having a discussion when I do that, right? So I do a lot of that up front. Uh, during the shoot, depending on if it's personal branding or, or so on, it, it's, it, it, really, it really depends on, on the subject, right? Some people just sit there and we kind of talk about what they want to do and they just do it. And I take picture and we pick the best one. Whereas some people you really have to guide them. So it, it really depends on the situation. Um, I, yeah. I struggle with, I, I really struggle with making people smile. Right. Yeah. We've Simple noticed getting somebody to smile without having to say, can you give me a smile, a baby smile, a this, a that, the other. 
Uh, and I still haven't found a trick to actually make people smile. Other than laugh at myself, I say, I know I'm going to sound corny, but can you smile, please? You know, you know, Peter Hurler is a master at that. <laughs> I'm kind of the other extreme on, on, on. So if anybody has tips about how to make people smile, you, uh, you know, other, I, than, other than say cheese. Yeah, you um, know, I, I, I tend to be pretty jokey with my clients in the studio, um, fooling around, trying to, you know, disarm them a little bit, make them a little bit more relaxed, right? Because everybody's nervous. I'm freaking out because I'm like, oh, my God, don't screw up the photos. They're freaking out because they're like, I had a zit three weeks ago and I can still see it and the photographer can't, but I know it's there, right? Everybody's worried about something. So anything that I can do to break the tension, break the ice is always good. A lot of times it might be something just as simple as, you know, uh, I'm ready to have fun. Anytime that you are, you just let me know and we'll dive right into it. And they just start to laugh a little bit and think about things a little bit more and try to relax and just relate to people yeah. um, to get their mind off of what we're doing. In there, as I'm talking, I follow the conversation much like we do here. Sometimes it's funny, sometimes it's very serious, and I'm always looking for those moments. I'm always looking for that expression because as I get to know someone, I understand where their personality generally sits. Are they happier, a little bit more serious, right? A little bit more concerned about things that are going on at home. And you can get a feel for their personality. What they want to draw out, I always try to target that whenever they're talking about confidence or they want to seem powerful or whatnot. I try to focus conversations there as they keep talking. Inevitably, those emotions will start to come through and alter that facial expression. So um, it's. I think there's a lot of nuance. I think there's a lot of, um, I'd like to believe that I'm doing a lot more and it's not and this is probably where Aaron's genius comes in is because he's letting the subject do all the work and with just an occasional poke or prod here or there. And I think that's, I think that's beautiful um, because there's no way you can force someone to have the perfect expression. Right. So in the, in the scheme of what we do, I think we all approach it in interesting ways. I want to take a look and I'm going to see because my mouse just died. So I'm using a Wacom tablet and a prayer and a dream to try to get uh, Bassam's video up here on the screen. So I'm going to I see. Hope, uh, I hope the streaming actually, because by the time it streams, it may be over, right? So let's we, hope, hope. Let's hope. We figure this out. Right. So that's right. the that's the that's the issue. So I'm going to I'm going to bring up the Artist Forge page, and um, I'm going to see if. I can play this. Absolutely. Love the ending. I love, the ending. I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> it's, it's just such a great end. Um, I love that because you can really see a lot of nuance through very, very small facial expressions as you go from happy to concerned to sad to weird to funny, right? And all those kind of emotions in between. Now, how many images were in that? That was 30 seconds. About 30, about 300. About 300, yeah. yeah. So uh, that's impressive. Um, I don't yeah, know. I had, if I, over, could... I had over 350, but 50 of them had, 50 or so had hands in them, and I didn't want to confuse it, so I took them out. And I'd like to give credit to Becca for, I mean, they, my head was all over the place in, in each picture, right? It wasn't all in the middle, but she actually pinned everything to my nose so that my face is moving around my nose, and I got to learn from her how to do that in video. Yeah, that would make things so much easier. Yeah, yeah. Um, did you learn anything from that in creating that and going through the 300 photos? Did you find some that you're like, oh, I know exactly what I was thinking there? Or was it yeah. just you're trying to work out your facial muscles? Like, No, no, no. I, I, actually, uh, I actually purposely, when I did this photo shoot, or I, I purposely worked on each emotion 
I prepared for it. I acted it out. I pretended to be in situations. I practiced in the car while I was driving for six hours. So it was very intentional to say, you know, I, I even had script where I say, this is how I would get mad when my daughter says such and such and such. Right. So I would go through that and then I would take pictures as I'm replying to her. So it was very intentional in terms of the emotions, very, in terms of trying to the, portray the emotions. But in there, you'll see a few where I just went crazy and I pulled my tongue out. And, I, you know, it, it, there's a few that were just impromptu, crazy, funny type of uh, and, and they're kind of spread in there. But most of them are emotions that I recognize, but I, I did not see my face. It's the first time I actually see myself with those with those uh, with those real facial expressions related to real emotions or at least as close to real as possible you know i really liked it and i think you you had something else that i'm going to share as well um and just while we're we're talking here i want you to um talk about this as well if i can find it it was your um <laughs> the no mouse things weird me out guys um been a few comments too while you're looking. I'm mind you, you're not you're multitasking there, but there's yep. a few comments we might want to share. So there was this one from uh, from Sharon, basically saying facial expression and body language is integral to our communication. We haven't always had language, so facial expression is the thing that you know allowed us to communicate, and that's a, such a, such a great great point because that ties into what I was saying at the beginning. We're always looking and we're interpreting these things subconsciously and not having language for thousands and thousands of years. I'm sure that was exactly how people communicated. Um, and then Sharon also says, uh, if I share with my model the feeling I'm looking for or a story I'm looking to accomplish, it's much more successful in getting good facial expressions than if I say I want to see a smirk or look sad. Um, the only time I feel I need to give direction is when I'm looking for exaggerated expressions. And Sarah, in a similar vein, says, I'll ask them to tell me a happy memory that always makes them laugh. And Claudia says, I always tell them how good they look. I joke around. And when I uh, want them to smile, I just ask them. By that time, they usually are in a good vibe and it's easy. And I think the common thread through a lot of that is that we're putting it on the subject to bring out that expression. We're not fine tuning it for them. We're saying, give me what your natural feeling is. What's that happy memory? You know, what is uh, what's that story? What is it, you know, um, that you felt in that moment? Right. And in that, we're putting it on them to recreate that emotion and refeel that so that we can um, yeah. capture that. And yeah, I think similar, that. Uh, oh, sorry. No, no, no. Go ahead. S similar to Sarah's uh, comment. I learned something from Michael Sasser, which is for my boudoir shoots is I, you know, you have a secret. Don't tell me what your secret is, but you know, you have a secret. So when I say you have a secret, that's what I want you to think about. And you can, and that usually works really, really well. I think it's important to also discuss like, not just like the value of coaxing the, the expression that you want from your client, but also like balancing everything in the image with the expression, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's really interesting, especially with kids. Um, also, kids are really, really fantastic at expression. Um, but at the same time, like they've all been sort of like indoctrinated into cheese. Right. right. And when you start getting into the, that imagery, especially with younger subjects, uh, where it is more storytelling, right. Whether they're in like gowns or as a character, right. Like not Spider-Man, obviously, um, because there's very little expression there. Uh, but like if they're superheroes of some sort or a king or something like that, like you want to make sure that the the expression that you're getting, right, is in an alignment with everything else in the image, right? With the light, with the wardrobe, with the, the posing even. Uh, and that's really where especially like beginning photographers, people who are just sort of either new to their business or have just started like experimenting with photography, um, they sort of get a little lost. You know, you have like a bright and airy image and this like. Yeah. Right. Uh, or vice versa. Like a really kind of moody, like you're going for that like fine art renaissance thing and the kid's like. 
Yeah. So understanding like how to direct and build so that your expression is cohesive with everything else that you're conveying in the image, uh, I think is really. Yeah, I think it's a great point. And earlier when I asked, when I said that I, I believe, or at least I think facial expressions are universal and, and we will all recognize them uh, no matter what. And obviously there's nuances there, but I think the nuances are, are, exa are, are, are uh, interpreted with other visual elements in the image, right? Mm -hmm. So whether it's the outfits, whether it's the location, whether it's the um, other visual literacy elements that bring in, bring that are brought into the image, that would help us interpret that same same facial oh, expression that we all recognize, anyways. But that speaks to that cohesiveness that you're talking about. And I think that the element of juxtaposition is really powerful too, right? Like when you have a whole family sitting there and they're all like super excited. And then that, like the, the mom's just off, like on the end, like, <laughs> yeah. Right. Like having that is really kind of where you can start negotiating the story that you're sharing based on expression. Um, so yeah, I mean, there are a million rabbit holes you could go down with it. Um, but some of it is universal, but some of it is also like intriguing. Uh, and I think that's really when it gets interesting with expression when you're like, I want to know more about this. What's happening here? So uh, speaking of which, I am going to <laughs> attempt to do what Nicole does and ooh. share Photoshop, right? Oh, right. So Kat, you just sent me these couple of pictures. Um, these are Aaron's pictures, right? And I apologize for the pixelization. It's Facebook compression and all the things uh, right. as we shoot images around. But in so this was this was shot by Jasmine Newton. Okay. Uh, I guess about a year ago. I recently like changed my profile picture, and I thought that the expression, like, yes, I appreciate the lighting in this. Like, it was just kind of one of those moments where it was like, oh, the blinds on the windows. Like, that's kind of cool. Um, but I'm curious what your evaluation of the expression is, which is why I I submitted it. Yeah, and. You know, it's it's sometimes hard, especially when speaking to a friend that I know you um, right. to put that aside. But looking at this, um, the face and the hands go hand in hand, so to speak. Um, there's this softness. There's this thoughtfulness. There's a little bit of tension in the hands, but not really because that fingers up. Right. So that brings me back to the face and thinking, what is she thinking? That raised eyebrow, that that look off in the distance. You can tell there's something behind the eyes. A little bit of a smile. Is it a smile? Is it Mark. something else, right? It's just very hint. And I can see why it could be interpreted a bunch of different ways. But I love, 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 love how the stripes of the light keep me focused right there on the face. I don't go down your arm and I don't go into the table or anything like that. I just stay on these eyes and that little bit of a smile. And like you were just saying, Kat, I'm drawn in. I'm, what is she looking at? What is she thinking? Who is she about to kill? Right. That's probably me knowing you. That's, um, it's more like, this is just a very, um, quiet moment that I'm observing. That's the way that I feel about it. Basam, how about you? I, I, I can't agree uh, more on that. I don't, I don't want to go through it again, but that's exactly how I felt. I love the expression. I mean, just, just imagine if the eyes were looking more in the direction of the nose, it would be a completely different expression. Yep. That, that just the fact that you see that white, which we say, oh, I'll never show that white, you know, the right. eye white. But when you, that white in the eye tells the whole story, right? In terms of where her thoughts are, they're further mm -hmm. away than we think. They're more elusive than we think, and it's more they're more mysterious than we think simply because of the position of the eyeballs. Yep. And yeah, absolutely. Let's yeah. look at I, another. I have a just a quick comment. I get a Michael Jackson vibe when I look at that picture. I don't know about <laughs> you, but no. <laughs> um yeah. Hey, are you okay? Are oh you my okay? god, what's this? Is that you too? Who took that? Is that one. Aaron J. Young? No, here's, here's, here's the other one. They're all they're all numbered something random, so I never know which one I'm going to pick up. No, because right, she so. said he didn't give her instructions, so I thought that's what she did. <laughs> uh, so here's another one. 
cat. Um, can you tell us a little bit about this? Sure. This was also shot by Jasmine Newton. Um, and the reason that I sent this is like, yes, there's, there's the expression, but the supportive elements with like the jewelry and the simplicity of the light. This is one of those instances, uh, like when we were talking about the jewelry, uh, last week with, um, Bassam's client. Yeah. The, the gentleman on the chair, yes. same kind of idea. Like I want so much happening here, right? That the expression then becomes sort of like, oh, there's that juxtaposition piece. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. But the jewelry then becomes the texture because everything else is monochromatic. Now, going back to the moment that this was taken, was there a prompt? Were you just in your, was, were you just in your, your element? Were you in your body and your own thoughts? And she was just capturing things. Did she ask you to think of something in particular? How did, how did this facial expression come about? Uh, well, she wanted to bring the hands up, right? Mm -hmm. Because of the jewelry and to sort of incorporate, mm -hmm. um, and I'm trying to remember if she prompted me beyond like, let's just kind of move your face sure. around in the thing. Cause what I really wanted to avoid was the stereotypical, like, yeah. Bit, right. But yeah. to bring it in, in an interesting way uh, and still have that thoughtfulness be a part of the equation. Um, you know, and I think there's, there's from a photographic standpoint, I think there's some rules being broken, right? With your hand so into your face and, you know, we're always trying not to push this stuff in different directions, um, but it's so natural and you're cradling, you know, your face so well that it's not distracted like that. And I think a lot of that just comes with experience of what to see and what not to see. Otherwise you wind up with these, right? So, um, I love that. I'm going to take a look yeah, to at use a, to use a word that I used earlier, a big word juxtaposition. It's an interesting juxtaposition of softness, mm -hmm. yeah. which really comes out in your face with that texture in the rings and that those like, yeah. I don't want to say rough. I can't find another word, but no, I typically, yeah, yeah. I wear a lot of jewelry sort of as armor. Like it brings mm -hmm. a, a visual interest, yeah. right? Yeah. But it is yeah. very much a, an armored thing. So to have a really kind of soft com contemplative expression, you know, comes into that, that fun juxtaposition space of like, oh, maybe she's not all RBF all the time, right? Exactly. <laughs> not, all, not all the time. Um, all right. And then here's the last one. Um, is this Aaron's work? Mm -hmm. It looks like his color palette. Yeah. Yeah. So she's telling him, what do you want? <laughs> I don't know. There's, there's, I see judgment. I see seduction. I see just inner, inner satisfaction um, of just this comfort in your own space. That's everything that I see here. It's just a relaxed, wonderful, I'm here, I'm present, this is it. That's the feeling that I get. There's no furrowed brow. There's no real up or down in the mouth. There's no heavy movement with the eyes. It is just this wonderfully peaceful, relaxed moment. That's what I get so from this expression. That is so interesting. Because if you look at the comments, Sharon yeah, is like, opposite, I yeah. dare you. I dare you. That's fascinating. And that's really where like, connection comes into play here mm -hmm. because he is photographing this like dead on mm -hmm. right and just like right at my eye line and that sort of power in an image just from the camera angle itself as well as you know you're looking at and saying you know no furrowed brow just present and like hey how are you and she's going mm -mm, come on yeah Hey, Kat, yeah. does, does Aaron shoot um, handheld or on a tripod for something, for these some of these images that, or some of, do you know? Well, at least with you, you probably. With me? No, he's handheld and tethered. Handheld. Okay. Just putting some of the comments up on the screen so people can read them as we're, as we're talking here. Um, regular clients, the muggles, right? Um, usually need to be posed and told, um, what to do, or more importantly, what I find, Claudia, is what not to do, 
right? You don't have to do this. You don't have to overthink it. You don't have to over try to be a model. You don't have to do the, the kid cheese, right? You don't have to do that. Just a lot of it is relaxation into yourself. And I think with that, when when someone's able to relax or not relax, that's perfectly fine if they're nervous, but if they can just be in their own space, that's where their natural expressions are going to come out. And that's fine too, because we're reading that, trying to decide, is that going to make a good image or not? Um, I want to take a look at a couple more here. And one um, is this. So our own Sicila, and she's going to murder me when she sees us up on screen. Um, but what does this say? Looking at that, I see actually like her ner surrendering to that nervousness and just enjoying the moment. Yeah, it's like, come on, like, what the hell? All right, I'll go with it. Yeah, and it was exactly that. There's a lot of those moments we were just, we got to a point where the absurdity of trying to pose each other, you know, because we know each other well. It's the same thing with, with any friend is that you start to laugh and have a good time. And then there's the, the resignation of, okay, it's weird being on this side of the camera. Let me just give in to it. And this was one of those natural fun moments. Um, but you know, some people might see it as she's squinting in pain, right? Other people might be like, she's laughing and having a great time. But I think there's something, um, with the closed eyes and you can see that there's a little bit of movement in it that brings a certain life to the expression as well. Um, let me bring up one more. And I think Basam, this was, nah, wasn't it? Let's try this one. This one. So, Basam, you had um, was this one of your clients? Yeah, this is a typical. Listen, this is this is not this was not complicated to do, and it's it's an example of a a, a a simple thing that a client wanted that we were able to accomplish relatively fast and relatively well, right? It's a client that said, "Hey, I'm just gonna do YouTube videos, and I'd like to have some transition slides or chapter title slides, kind of as we mm -hmm. go through the YouTube video." And, you know, we stretch it out, put some uh, negative space and, and write stuff, right? Titles and such. And all we did was set up, I mean, simple lighting, basically. And, uh, and I told her, just go ahead and just make expressions, right? And do what you want. We probably ended up with, I don't know, 25, 30 pictures and picked the best. Well, there's nine here, but we probably picked other ones. And, and it's, just a, it's just an example of a client just doing what they want and using facial expressions and hand and motion and whatever uh, to get what they want. And I, I thought it was successful. She loved the photos. And it, it's all about, well, what do you see in each picture? What is the emotion? What is that prompt that she's trying? What is the thought process that she wants you to see? How does she want you to react when you see that in a YouTube video? You know, like uh, like the bottom left, for example, the word mm -hmm. "what if," like, mm -hmm. "what if we were to," and then you you know, so it's it's a it's an interesting way to 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 kind of add substance to 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 your content. I guess. And what, there's what, what, go ahead, Kat. No, go ahead. Good. What I really like about it is how successful the body language is with the expressions. Exactly. Right, because if you have sort of like when we aren't successful, right? And like maybe you have really closed up, um, you know, body body language, but like- Yeah, different face, but same, team, yeah. Right, when they're not cohesive, that's when, you know, that, that failure occurs. Um, but these are all like very cohesive with her expression, with her body language. They're consistent because, you know, the styling and the lighting is all, you know, unified. Uh, and so, yeah, no wonder she's super excited and happy with it. You know, and I think one of the, and Sharon agrees with you, Kat, um, by saying, agreed, Kat. Um, <laughs> and then uh, just talking, uh, Jean, we were talking about Sisla's photo. She finally realized that Jean thinks he's funny. Laughter mixed with disbelief. <laughs> Spot on. Um, Lindsay saying, I love doing this type of photo booth shoot, especially with my kids, all the expressions. I... I love this for a lot of reasons. One, because it gets them, it gets the client at least into 
thinking more about expression than nerves, right? It's thinking about, hey, how can I do this? How can I help the photographer? How can I move through? I love this on the on my side because this is a perfect example of branding, right? If you're trying to build something out for your website or for your social media presence, showing all the different sides of you or all the different sides of a person really helps you start to think through what's the message that I'm trying to get across. So when we're thinking about facial expression, you know, if you're trying to present yourself to your clients or to your customers as confident or thoughtful or smart or funny, right? Having a lot of those to illustrate the different sides of you can really help in building that brand imagery. There's nothing that says it more than seeing nine or 12 or 15 of these all together. So you can really start to pick out, wow, that's really me, or that's really me, or I love that for my clients. And I love the way that you did this, Bassam, because it seems like you put a lot on her to just kind of cycle through all of these thoughts and expressions. And that becomes very playful and very fun. And, you know, now you're partnering together to create all this wonderful uh, content. And, you know, Lindsay saying that she does it with her kids, you know, it's capturing all these minute sides of everybody. And we never really push it that far because we're always like, just get the nice, photograph, relax yeah. your mouth, smile, whatever, right? We're always going for that. We don't tend to play. I love the playfulness in all yeah. of this. And you just made me think, because I think I, I do exactly what you said. I just want to get onto the next theme and take that one or two pictures, right? Whereas I should incorporate this in almost every personal branding one, because it's it's just creates more content yep. that, that they're probably get attached to a heck of a lot more than all the other stuff, right? So I should just do it as part of the process, right? Now, the part I don't like about this type of work is retouching, right? Mm -hmm. Because if what, even if it's minimal retouching, you've got to do it 15 times in the same way, in a consistent way. And yes, the lighting is the same, so it makes it easier. But my point is, if, if it's somebody that wants their wrinkles to be smoothed out, you have to do it on all 15 pictures. It hey, gets to be a bit tired. Hey, I'm happy to. Sorry? Oh, no, no, I know, I know. I know. <laughs> but it's just... It's it, just a, it's just a thing retouching, but yeah, so, I'm going to, I'm going to think of doing this. I will do this on most of my personal branding. You know, I'll, I'll tell you a very quick story on something very similar to this. Um, I spent the weekend doing some commercial retouching for a ski brand. They have clients that uh, they, they have employees that want to show different sides of their personality. So I'm retouching for another photographer out West and so he sends me all of these, all of these images, probably about a hundred for in, in total. And they're looking for five or six different expressions for each person so that they can choose and have a good headshot, personality driven headshot for the brand. And it was interesting. Some people gave like nine great expressions like this. And now I have to figure out, oh, what are the best five? And then there are some where there are 30 shots and the expression doesn't change at all. It's just the position of the body. So, you know, it makes it difficult to hone in on personality when nothing is being given. Um, so I love this working with, uh, with brand. So um, Becca, welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Well, uh, we were just talking facial expression and while, um, while you're here, I am going to bring up something, um, not that one, not that one. These need to be named different, not that one. We'll just keep going, not that one. <laughs> we'll try it again. Hey, there it is. Okay. Yay! So, speaking of facial expression, um, I wanted to bring this up just from the um, illustrative side, get away from the portraits for a second, and really kind of dive into what you do. Because I think not only are characters driven so much by their expression, um, but I wanted something that would jar us out of just the regular portrait. So when you're thinking about character development, um, where does facial expression lie for you in your creation process? Do you start there with an emotion or do you start with the grander concept and bring it back to the expression to fit it? Where do you, how do you approach all of that? 
I think it really depends what's happening yeah. in, a, in the particular moment of catching the character. Um, yeah, because, I mean, a, a good character will generally go through a range of emotion. This is such a cool example. <laughs> I'm so glad you saved that picture. And I'm um, sorry for the pixelization, but I'm just going to get in on the fairy and the, uh, the demon. Cats. Why are you like this? Yeah, this is this is one of those interesting examples. Like when um when we were looking at body language, Nicole did the just kind of like line the the like uh kind of S curve sort of draw drawing. So we looked at an emotion in the body without actually having a body. Um, so our fairy here, our bone fairy, um, she doesn't have actually like a lot of skin going on to really really give you an exaggerated expression. Um, in a higher quality version of this image the right. little tooth fairy is a uh, smiling very big and it's very cute but the the expression on this larger creature is a little bit harder to dissect and i think that there is this really fine art of kind of micro expression that yes photographers can learn to pick at as well but illustrators have to be really really good at that animators especially have to be really good at that um but it's all dependent of course you know on your character how do they actually react as a person or creature entity, and, uh, entity. <laughs> yeah and uh, what exactly it is that's happening because if there's something like horrific happening and someone is smiling really cute like that little fairy holding the tooth you know that's going to give a completely different view of character and a different story entirely than if they're screaming in terror or they're you know completely deadpan so narrative number one as usual you know and, and one of the things that i i do like to do and you know i've watched some this is going to be a tangent some photoshop actions right where they're they're doing frequency separation and they zoom way out so they can get kind of average color tone and start running the action and i like doing the same thing with facial expression where i zoom way out and see, is there something that I can notice right away? Is there a smile? Is there a frown? Is there something that gives me an indication as to um, what is being done here before I zoom in and look really closely? Is that a smile? Is she about to snap the tooth fairy off her shoulder? I don't know. Um, but I like the way that I have to keep looking at this, much like we were looking at Kat's portraits earlier, where I want to stare at it and understand a little bit more and tie in the mouth to the eyes, to the wrinkles in the forehead, to the tooth fairy smiling. Um, like all of these elements I really like to study. And when I come across a an expression that is quizzical to me or enigmatic, then I like to just kind of sit and look at it. And I think some of the classical pieces of art that we've looked at really capture that because you never know what they were thinking, right? The prostitute example that we we're looking at in the 17th century court yeah. picture that we we're looking at. I had no idea what anybody was thinking in any of those, <laughs> right? Because like someone's mad, someone's happy, someone's drinking tea, right? Um, you can never really tell what's going on, which is why I love to study this stuff. So um, yeah, Kat, Basam, really do you see anything here? Yeah, okay. One, is that a dagger in the big creature's neck? No. It it's just lined up with whatever you know, the cross leathery, the leathery yeah. looking cross. Yeah, I think I think it's all bones. So the concept for this image, the the painter, it's it's a tooth fairy and then the bone fairy. Okay. Um, what so else I, I think is interesting too, and this is based off of the expression on the larger bone fairy creature, is like I wish a bitch would, right? Right. Like, <laughs> tooth fairy, mess with her, I dare you. Like what? Like they're walking down the street and like tooth fairy's just chilling out and like, oh hey, come on now, right? Like <laughs> that's just kind of how I'm I'm reading it. But it, I mean, maybe I would just need to see the image. At a, at a higher resolution because that's straight up just straight to neck yeah in which case the expression wouldn't make sense i i think cat there's this like leather uh strap from a dress and then the that's oh, the, that's the, the back behind yeah okay yeah. that makes more sense 
So uh, there's that. All right. I, this would. I can't understand how or believe, quite frankly, um, that we filled an hour. I have no idea how we did it, but we got there. Um, so by no well, means... It was easy, it was easy for uh, Becca because she only filled five minutes. Ooh, shots Ooh. fired. I'm Look at sorry, that expression. My phone died. <laughs> my alarm didn't go off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good excuse. <laughs> so... Um, up at 5.30 a.m. with me, Bassam. Let's go. It's too, it's too early to be fighting on a Monday okay. morning. Um, it's Monday, y'all. Like... So, <laughs> You know, I know that Nicole would go much more in depth with the detail and the minutia on interpreting facial expression as it relates to visual literacy. But I think, you know, coming from the three portrait artist perspective here and then an illustrator, there are certain things that you have control over and certain things that you don't. Um, do you want to drive to a certain expression or do you want to let them happen? And I think we're dependent on the situation and the type of photography or the type of illustration that you're going for, the type of documentation that you're capturing, um, all of that can be different. How does the expression tie into the greater scene? Does it fit? Is it congruent? Or is it really apart from what's happening in the rest of the scene? Like you said, Kat, if this is just like some big smiling uh, expression that didn't make sense in the scene, would that take you out of it? I don't know. So, um, you know, I'd love to continue the conversation in the Facebook group about this, maybe in Bassam's thread with his uh, video, because um, it's a good place to capture all that. You know, if you have examples of facial expression, you want us to look at it and tell you what we think, or you have a good expression that you think might make for interesting discussion, please put that in the Facebook group. Um, I think that as we get through all of these smaller bits of visual literacy, I hope you can see them all coming together so that it's not like, hey, that's a nice picture. There's a lot of shit to look at when you're interpreting this. And it goes well beyond even what we do in competition. Um, we're really trying to break things down smaller and smaller and smaller so that we can really pay attention to those details. Um, final thoughts from any of you guys on expression? If you're looking for your cat, Becca, he's under the bookshelf. <laughs> There's so many. There's one down here, too. <laughs> I was just like watching him kind of skulk underneath the bookshelf. I was like, hmm. Well, things going to just fall forward. There's so many, so many. All right, I do have a thought, though. I do yeah. have a thought. Very serious art thought. Um, there's the skulking cat. Uh, so, so Matt, you mentioned like wanting to study those enigmatic expressions, and I feel like putting in that work to do the intentional study of face can be really, really helpful. Um, I, I think I might have mentioned we were on Clubhouse once upon a time. So my my oldest son is on the autism spectrum, and he has a great deal of difficulty recognizing facial expression and reading facial expression. Um, not from a lack of empathy. He just, it doesn't register to him. Like he's not looking for that. And so what his psychiatrist recommended is like, she gave us a whole bunch of movies to watch and was just like, you need to go home. I need to make him watch all these movies and pause at certain places where there's like certain big emotional impact on the actor's faces. And I want you to ask him exactly what is being communicated through the expression on that face. And obviously, even if you don't have autism and you can understand what's happening on a face, like that's such a valuable exercise. And being able to like, hey, what exactly is happening here? And within the context of a movie, you have the greater storyline to give you those answers. And a really spectacular actor is gonna help you along that journey to figure out what each little tiny, just barely twitch in a face is actually telling. So good homework if anyone wants to go do something. That's a great idea. Yeah, you know, and, and it, made me remember and i i'm not going to do this justice i'm probably just going to be lying um but i remember seeing a documentary it was either pixar or dreamworks it was behind the scenes things how they were making stuff and all the artists going through you know not only the storyboarding process but going through man that expression's really not right when they're saying these certain things and i always find those those 
like concept art, pre-drawing storyboards to be wonderful studies in expression because they're really trying to match the script with the actor, with what's happening in the story and illustrating in um, or animating that is so important to get it across the right way to the audience, whether it's a kid or an adult, right? And having that mastery of that expression in an animated form is a great way to study that too. Watch Shrek or watch Finding Nemo and look for those little facial expressions that you can stop the same way you were talking about, Becca, and study and be like, does it match what's going on? Um, I always just found that to be fascinating. Animators fascinate me. All right, Animators guys. for sure, yeah. Oh, no, um, but we, we passed our hour. I'm too late. We'll stop. No, we're, we're I'm to roll out, y'all, but have an awesome week, and uh, I will see you in the group. See y'all later. Bye. Bye. Thanks for coming. Bye.